Yo, what up everyone? Today I got another weapon guide for you guys. This time we are taking a look at one of the new weapons that came with the current ongoing event, Tide of Shadows. We are looking at the drilling. The drilling comes with two rifle barrels which work mechanically like the Caldwell or the Nitro in comparison to the fire rate. On top of that it has a long barrel shotgun barrel at the bottom. As a fun fact, the drilling in German means triplet, which kinda explains its name by itself. The drilling costs 510 hand dollars, unlocks at level 20 in the event tree and comes with various special ammo types like you can see here. Its default stats on the rifle are 530 bullet velocity, 170 meter headshot range and 120 damage. On the shotgun I sadly can't directly take a look at its stats, but as a long barrel shotgun it is fairly potent, especially in combination with special ammo. Also on a side note let's talk about, let's talk about secondaries real quick. In my opinion I would go on the drilling with a high fire rate secondary, you could play the Bornheim, the new army, the officer or the Spitfire, all very strong and very viable. Of course guns like the uppercut or the dodge also work, but they're fairly expensive and you don't get that much value out of it since most of the work you want to be done by your drilling anyways since it is so volatile. But let's take a look at all the ammo types in the shooting range so we can pick our favorites. Like I said already, the drilling works just like the rival or the nitro. It can shoot two bullets in very quick succession one after another like you will see here. One and two. So it's really good at two tapping. The two tap range on the normal rifle is 60 meters, like I will showcase you guys here. I'm gonna run back at 55, shoot the dummy twice, just so you guys see what's happening. You know? In the shooting range you can ping to see the range of your enemies, like you see here. I shoot twice in the chest. Now just to show you the maximum two tap range, we're gonna go all the way back in the range, like you see here. 61 meters, 1 and 2. That's the maximum 2 tap range with 2 chest shots. Like you can see, it's actually really good. Like it's a very strong weapon in my opinion, especially for medium ammo. This is a very far 2 tap range. Now I'm gonna show you guys the shotgun. In my opinion, the buckshot is not the best because it has a lot of spread to it, like you guys will see here. At that range you can one tap, but it doesn't always work. Sometimes you shoot them like you see here, get like a little bit more RNG on it and you will no longer one tap. Let's reset the dummy real quick. Just so we get the damage, I would say up to like 10 meters, it's fairly okay. Like you see here, 12 meters, still bad RNG on it. Now we go all the way up to 10 meters and that's where the shotgun shines, but you're definitely gambling. Even though it's a long barrel, uh, long barrel shotgun, it doesn't have the best spread. Like you will see here, the Spectre has a long barrel shotgun and the Crown King has a long barrel shotgun. Fairly tight pellet spread on the buckshot. Now is the comparison the drilling. Kinda goes all over the place. It does do the job, you know, up to 10 meters. But anything past that, you are gambling the further you go. Now we're gonna take a look at the other rifle and shotgun special ammo types. Here we have a dum dum ammo. Dum dum applies intense bleeding as a medium rifle since 1.13. Like you can see here, within 5 seconds the dummy bleeds out. It's not as strong as the Springfield, I have a video on that, but people have to stop that bleed immediately or they will die. Dum dum doesn't really change the two tip range. Theoretically we have a little bit more range, but it has lower velocity, so the two tapping at range will be much harder. But the damage is the same, just it applies bleed. Like you can see here, 61 meters, 75 damage twice, or like the first bullet was 75, the second was a little bit less due to the bleed. But you know it comes with the downside that it has much less velocity, so the long range shots will be much harder. Now just to show you guys the best shotgun ammo type on this drilling is actually the slugs. Because as a long barrel shotgun it has the 50 meter one tap, like the Romero, the Spectre or the Chronic King. 
which is actually fairly insane and super strong and makes this gun so versatile that I would say it might even be an S tier weapon, especially for solo players. Last but not least, we're gonna take a look at the FMJ ammo. FMJ increases the damage over range carryover. It also has less velocity, 371. I will show you guys how much further you can actually two tap with FMJ. On a side note, FMJ also increases the headshot range from 170 all the way to 210. But like you see here, like you can see here, we're gonna go at like 77 meters. Gonna go for the two tap. And it still does the job. Just to show you the maximum amount of range you can go, I'm gonna go further up the wall. The two tap range is roughly 81 meters. Which is actually insane. Not that easy to hit though, due to it having very low bullet velocity, but I think this gun is actually a rare occasion on which all rifle bullets are viable and have their own purpose, which is actually kinda nice for, you know, change once in a while. Usually every other weapon only has like one or two bullets that are playable and all the others are more of a meme. Also, just so you guys, you know, see it, I'm gonna show you guys how the penny shot is. Penny shot is even more gambling in my opinion, like you see here, even more spread than on the buckshot, so yeah, I highly recommend playing slugs on this flechette, I wouldn't even bother. Right now, just as a side note, when you push Roger, you fight in very unfamiliar areas. So, this is actually kinda nice, it kinda makes the maps feel like new maps. The management is close to being done. I see a guy pushing for the Roger bounty. Get a nice headshot, we saw how easy it was to line up, it's kinda like shooting a spark. I don't know if that guy is a solo player, so I'm immediately starting to push here, but again, it's a new area, it's kinda like weird to fight here because nobody has ever fought in this area and you just step on people like here, another person, but there it is, the insane fire rate and the low recoil on this gun allows me to miss a shot, line up the next one and then hit another headshot. That was an insane headshot, I have to agree, but show me any other rifle that has that much firepower that also has this insane fire rate while not requiring any trades for it. Actually really good. Now that I saw a second person, I'm sure there is a third as well. So I'm just like roaming the area and trying to find where somebody or where the last person is. I just shot that guy and was bleeding. Nobody tried to finish me off, so I was sure I could loot that body here. I'm gonna keep rotating to the left here. Because in my opinion, that's probably the position where somebody is person was actually camping under the stairs and again with that high fire rate I was allowed to miss a shot but can instantly hold the next angle and finish them with a headshot. This is in my opinion like I said already the strong suit of normal ammo on the crack rifle. It has such high velocity that it is fairly easy within 100 meters to line up headshots and on top of that it does have the shotgun in case you want to push in case you get pushed. But let's jump into the next clip. In this clip, I am third partying a fight at Roger around the Pelican Prison. I wanna highlight again how good the fire rate mechanic, the double tap mechanic on the drilling is. In my opinion, like I said already, it is kinda like playing the old quick swap fire rate wise, and it deals tons of damage. I hear multiple enemies, I hear one guy pushing to my bottom left, so I decide to peek him. I hit him twice, really quick here, finish with a headshot, but it doesn't matter. Start looking for his friends. I am getting shot from the bottom area by the pelican prison, spot the enemy, 
Instigo for the body tap, and with a quick fire rate I can immediately tap him again, hit another headshot, but it wouldn't have mattered I think, and we would have killed him anyways, even if it was a double body tap. I'm fairly certain that I'm taking out Doom here, since nobody is shooting me while looting. So I'm gonna continue playing here, and go back towards the watch draw banishment. I get shot by Dumbbell Ammo here, I'm bleeding, fix up my bleed, try to figure out where everybody is. In the new weather type it's actually kinda hard to hear, so you have to kinda like rely on your instinct sometimes. I cannot spot the Dumb Dumb player, but I do know there's somebody dead below me. So I'm deciding to check on the body and actually find the player and again take him out with a 2 tap. Nothing he could have really done about it except headshotting me. I'm gonna do a quick skip here, I burned some of the bodies since nobody was pushing me. While doing that, somebody actually finished Watcher and vanished, so I decided to push that since I think it's the last person alive on the enemy team. So I'm using my flashbang here, swap to the shotgun mode and decide to push. Badly I was wrong and it was actually another team of two. Kinda weird, but it happens even though I was playing solo with trios, so even there were like a bunch of duos in my lobby. I get lucky that I survive here and can reset and heal up. Now I do hear that somebody is pushing me. So I'm deciding to like take an angle from where I have the advantage. I take the high ground. From there I peek into the gator. Take him out with a nice headshot. Which is actually fairly easy within that range. Due to the normal ammo's high velocity of 530. Now that I killed the gator I'm looking for the teammate. I'm not really sure where they are. So I'm just like playing fast and aggressive. I can't really hear much due to the rain. And he gets a jump on me. Luckily, even though I missed the first shot, the drilling's high fire rate came through again and I could just like headshot them again. They didn't even comprehend that I could shoot that quick, we peaked the same angle because I missed and I could just instantly headshot them. I thought that somebody is third partying me here, but I was wrong. It was just a chaos. In the next clip I want to show you guys how versatile the drilling actually is. I got killed here by an uppercut headshot while crossing the field. Due to the new resilience change and necro I can immediately get up, reset here. They got third partied while they were like fighting me, so they're like very distracted. They are not even aware that I got revived here. So I got in a position behind them, took my time with my first shot, land a headshot. Sadly due to the low velocity I don't hit the second one, I swapped to my high fire rate. Bornheim here, with another nice headshot. Like I said, high fire rate guns are actually very good on the drilling. Now the last person on the team is pushing me. That looked like a spectre to me, so I thought it was a shotgun, so I swapped to my shotgun mode and am ready for a 1v1 shotgun fight, take some out with the slug and manage to finish the fight. The drilling just has so much versatility that even though it has like a strong and potent rifle, I can still swap to my shotgun mode and 1v1 any shotgun player that I run into. Before we jump into the Dum Dum category, I'm gonna show you guys the biggest advantage Dum Dum ammo has over normal ammo. It is that it allows you to push into shotgun range. Like you can see here, I'm trying to finish the last person of an enemy team. I tackle at like 50 to 60 meters, but it applies intense bleeding. So she has to stop it. That means I can just run up on her, get into shotgun range and finish the fight. In my opinion, Dum Dum ammo, if you get used to the 371 velocity, is the strongest ammo type on the drilling, even though all of them are more than viable. In the next clip, I'm gonna show you guys a little part of like a full video that I will be releasing soon. In this game, I actually got called out for cheating, but that's a completely different story for the next video. But I wanna highlight how good Dum Dum ammunition in combination, especially with slugs, is. I'm in the middle of a three-way here, two teams are fighting me. I'm trying to find out where the last person of the first team I was fighting is. I hear them inside that window, finish them with my slugs. Now that I know that there is a full-on team on the north side of the compound, 
north northwest side of the compound. I heal up, drop over to my dum dum ammo, bought the first enemy, and due to me being used to low velocity rifles, I take a nice shot and hit the headshot. Spot the next enemy, I do tag her, go for the double tap, don't hit her, but I know she's intensely bleeding, so I can just push up because I base it in a 1v1. Take the 1v1, kill the second player of the second team. She was still patching up her heal, swap over to the slugs, sadly don't get the one tap, but she's low HP, swap back to the dum dum ammo and finish the fight. Like you saw there, I could easily isolate 1v1s due to tagging the second player, apply intense bleeding, she has to go back, heal, stop the bleeding, and I basically isolate 1v1s by having dum dum ammo and applying intense bleeds. Also, like you saw there, the slugs have fairly, a fairly far one tap range, like you saw on the carcass. But the whole video will be coming up probably on Friday or Saturday. This was actually like a double digit kill game. Anyhow, let's look at FMJ ammo, which in my opinion is the worst, but still very viable ammo type on the drilling. In this match, we are in between two teams, as usual. The bounty team doesn't do anything though, they barricaded themselves with Concertina. And we will be fighting the second team that is arriving at the boss. This is a very good comparison of FMJ versus normal drilling. That person does have a drilling as well, but it barely hit me. I have region shot as well. Like you saw here, me having FMJ on that range and being able to lead at such a low velocity I am able to easily toot her while well, she barely scratched me. Now that I took out one person of the incoming team, I decide to drop down here after missing two shots at that range and take the fight a little bit closer to suffer a little bit less under the low velocity. Also I want to contest the body so they don't go for a revive, I need to finish the team here. I don't want to be caught in a Mexican standoff in between two teams, which usually ends up with me getting sandwiched. I'm utilizing Lightfoot here to make the least amount of noise as possible. I hear them pushing, so I decide to hold an angle to maybe get an easy kill here. Sadly I do miss two shots, but I do hear them pushing, so I fall back, rotate, get behind hardcover and see if somebody is pushing the high ground to maybe gets the off angle on me. I don't see anyone but I hear somebody at the shoreline. So I decide to wide swing it. I see them, they decide to stand still and I get a nice headshot at like 60-70 meters with FMJ. See the second person, didn't have to reload and get another nice double tap. The biggest highlight here in that clip was the first initial double tap, especially the comparison to the normal drilling, to my drilling. You saw like how I easily I 2 tapped her, meanwhile she dealt like 50-60 damage, especially since I had region shot, there was no way she could have even touched me. In the last clip of this video I have another FMJ highlight. In my opinion it is not bad, but it's not the best ammo type in my opinion. The best ammo type is Dum Dum due to the intense bleed, but FMJ actually is fairly strong, especially the longer a fight goes. Since it does pack a punch for a little bit longer than the other ammo types. I'm third partying a fight around the boss layer here. Like you can see here, even with the 370 velocity, it's not that hard to hit like 50 60 meter headshots. Now that I got the first kill, I'm scanning the area for more opponents. I got shot here. I can't really see her yet, it's a loose Mala skin, sometimes very hard to spot, but I do hear where she was coming from, so I heal up. Reposition slightly, re-peak here, hit the second shot, missed the first one, but due to its high fire rate we can still punish them. I get poisoned here, pushed, can't reload but swap to my shotgun and take down another enemy. With most other guns, I could have used my secondary here, but with most other guns I would have been stuck in a reload and couldn't have done anything. I use the firebomb here to kill the bees, for anyone who doesn't know that. Fire bullets, fire damage, flare pistol, destroys bees. I had to sadly reset here, couldn't finish the team. I tried to shoot through the train here, sadly can't make it hit. 
they shoot me back, they find the right angle, so I have to roll back again. Use my witch shot, reposition smartly. Try to rotate in a way that there are all three in front of me, so I can isolate one we want, so I don't have to worry about getting peaked from the sides. I throw a sticky here, pet the lantern so it drops to the floor, maybe catch somebody off guard. Nobody is pushing, but I get a nice re-kill here, like you can see. Actually crazy how long the 120 damage gets carried on the FMJ. With the normal ammo types, I probably wouldn't have killed here, to be quite honest. Now I continue looking for only once. Spotted the Muppet Lady, can't finish off, I don't want to over peek here. So I just like reload, reposition, takes the high ground. Tags the loose mana, she has to heal now. Try to continue pushing with that. Sadly get attacked by poison ammo. Can't heal right now, so I decide to rotate again. I sadly have to give them the revive on the bring it's man. And we do the same thing in reverse basically. I take the slugs, she already died. Twice, so it's like an easy one tap. I go back on the high ground to isolate one we once from there. Get kinda lucky that I didn't die to the long ammo. But you know, I was running reason shot, so reason shot value, in my opinion. Keep rotating to continue isolating 1v1s. Here, one guy close. Finish them with 120 damage to the chest, since they already died. Leave it with Mala. Back at the metal train. They're probably going for the revive, but I don't want to overcommit here since I can't really stop the revive. So just play the boxes again. Take the high ground again. Get a nice little headshot here. Like you can see, even with like 370 velocity, as long as they stand still, within 50 meters, it's more than enough. Swap to my shotgun. Sadly hits the metal, so I can't finish her, but she is low HP, and I finish her with another FMJ shot, 120 to the chest. At this range, there's zero damage drop off. Even though I think Dum Dum is stronger, and I probably could have finished the fight faster with Dum Dum, since the intense bleeding is actually very cracked, I still think FMJ is super strong. 120 damage is not to be underestimated, even though it doesn't want up to the chest when you're missing a 25 bar. But 120 damage is 120 damage. But anyways, this was it with my little drilling guide. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope I could showcase you guys all the different ammo types. It got a little bit longer since actually all rifle ammo types are very viable. I see you guys in the next video and thank you for watching.